Let's talk about the polls tonight. Do you expect them to show an improvement in your party's poll ratings? No, I'm not sure that there'll be a lot of change yet, um, but uh, I think as we get into the campaign and people start focusing on what the issues are, you know, look, uh, I get around the country and I talk to a lot of people on the ground, and on the ground it feels a hell of a lot better than what the polls are showing. Absolutely. I mean, there's a saying, don't count your apples until you're outside of the orchard and inside the right time. <laughs> no, well, look, that's, that's, that's very true, and we'll be fighting this election campaign hard. There's a hell of a lot at stake. And uh, we need change now. Food for thought indeed. Hey, what do you make of the hysteria surrounding the Rugby World Cup? We've had the Adidas jersey debacle, Telecom's controversial abstain for the game campaign, and now this guy in Porirua claiming he's going to slaughter one of his chickens for every point that the All Blacks lose by. Is, is there going to be an end to this madness? Well, yeah, yeah there will. It'll be about October uh, the, the 22nd, I think. But uh, Is this oh, just our country's way of dealing with the pressure? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there's some silly stuff. I mean, Adidas buggered it up completely. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, it was bad enough paying twice as much uh, for the All Black jersey uh, that they were charging in their shops. But when they tried to stop online sales, you know, that was straight anti-competitive. Uh, it, it's absolutely unacceptable. Yep. And they're claiming that they're doing us a favour. You know, this is a commercial deal for them, and they've damaged themselves. Let's talk about the environment. Of course, a very important issue here in New Zealand. Uh, we've got species like the Loetta bird, uh, the southern pygmy troll, the Marlborough wallop, which are now critically endangered. Are you aware of the plight of these animals, and, and is conservation a priority for labour? Well, I think conservation and environment have to be a, a priority, and, uh, and some of the things that, you know, the, the loss of our biodiversity, uh, that's a serious issue. Uh, the pollution of our rivers, our lakes, our harbours. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a travesty, isn't it? I mean, the southern pygmy troll in particular is an animal which is now uh, limited to, to small pockets of tundra uh, in the South Island, and it, it's an animal that's part of our heritage. Uh, the present government has barely even acknowledged uh, the, the struggle of the, of the species. Are, are you saying under a Labour government uh, more would be done for these animals? The Department of Conservation has a, a huge job to do and yet it's been absolutely hammered in the cuts that have been made. And if we want them to carry out their responsibilities uh, for protecting our heritage, for protecting uh, endangered, endangered species, for protecting uh, uh, our, our national parks, uh, then, then we've got to adequately resource them to do it. Let's talk briefly about John Key. He's a bit of a piece of work, isn't he? Well, you know, um, people have to make a, their own judgment on him. Uh, I've got to concede this to him. He is a master of spin. Uh, the National Party spin machine is probably uh, the, 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 uh, you know, the slickest that I've ever seen. Um, the John won't go on Morning Report. He won't go on Campbell Live. Uh, you know, people on, on, on those media outlets complain continuously to me that you know they won't focus. Uh, he won't front up and, uh, and and answer the hard questions. But you create a photo opportunity, and he's there, and he does that really well. I was told by a reliable source. I don't know if there's any truth to this. I was told that when leaving an MP's office, he has been known to knock an item of stationery off their desk. Uh, in order to emphasise his point, have you ever experienced this? Is there any truth to it? I, I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> you'd have to you'd have to ask people in his own patch about that one. I'm sorry. If you had to rate the situation in Libya out of ten, uh, one being irremediable and ten being bootless, what would you rate it? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's a, it's a difficult position. I'm I'm uh, uh, certainly no supporter of Gaddafi. He's run a, a dictatorship there, um, but uh, nothing is black and white. The grey's only as dark as the next shade, I suppose. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, and you've got the same situation in Syria. Um, but, you know, the brilliant thing, I suppose, is the courage and the determination of people that have been out on the street there, putting their lives at risk, losing their lives, uh, to try to create a better country for themselves. Phil, thank you so much for your time. You certainly have our support. And, you, uh, yeah, hope to, hope to speak to you again soon. All the best for the archery tournament. OK, good on you, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. How many stadiums could you fill with all the people killed in the Phil Goff there. Always a pleasure to speak to him. Um, he's certainly got our support here at Radio Ponsonby, a Ponsonby state of mind. 107.7 FM or tune in at radioponsonby.co.au.